Can you hear me okay? Can you understand my American accent? <laughs> I think, I don't think there's many Americans here. Isn't that good news? I, when I went around, I was so happy to see Canadians and, Aus and Australians, Scotland, Ireland, England, the Philippines, New Zealand, I even saw some. But I, I didn't, Canada. But I'm telling the truth. I know there are 40,000 of us here, but I didn't meet anybody from the United States. Are there some? Good. Bravo, bravo. Now, now is the time of God's mercy. When I think about that theme, everybody, you gotta pardon me, uh, my imagination goes back home to the middle of Manhattan at 5th Avenue and 50th, St. Patrick's Cathedral. And my imagination takes me to Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. Why? Ash Wednesday at St. Patrick's Cathedral, smack dab in the middle of New York City, is a big day. 50,000 people come to St. Patrick's for Ash Wednesday. And when they come, they hear from God's holy word, from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, they hear St. Paul say, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time of mercy, Pope Francis tells us for this theme of the first catechesis. So we need to think a little bit, everybody, about the nowness, the nowness of God's call, the urgency, the urgency of the invitation that Jesus gives to all of us because now is the time of mercy. Now, Here's why this is urgent. Here's why this is right now. Because, and we don't have to be embarrassed, we're among friends. We all got this problem. We don't, we like to put things off when it comes to God. See if you agree with me. When it comes to matters of faith, when it comes to religion, when it comes to accepting friendship with Jesus, when it comes to a decision that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior and my best friend, when it comes to an admission that we need God and his mercy, guess what? We are all Olympic gold medalists at delay, at putting that off, at procrastination. You know what that word means? Procrastination, what we do with our term papers in school, we put them off. When it comes to God's invitation, we are pros at putting it off, at delaying. I think most of you are probably familiar with the American novel and the famous movie, Gone with the Wind. Now, you remember the star of Gone with the Wind, Scarlett O'Hara. And remember her favorite words? Whenever there would be some tough decision, whenever there would be a challenge, whenever there would be a difficulty, Scarlett O'Hara would always say, I'll think about that tomorrow. 
I'll think about that tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, we are all Scarlet O'Hara's when it comes to our life with God. We always are saying, I'll think about that tomorrow. We put God off. We delay. We postpone. In a way, that's, do you mind if I take this off? before it pops off, all right? Uh, it takes out that whole first row, all right? Uh, can I take this off too? Oh, I'll be down in my swimming suit in a minute. I, I think this delay, this postponement, this procrastination, it's sort of typical with anything tough in life, right? Right before I left New York, I visited a lady dying of cancer at Sloan Kettering. And she says to me, Cardinal Dolan, three years ago, I discovered a little lump in my breast, but I denied it. I ignored it. I didn't do anything about it. I put off going to the doctor. And now it's too late. Now I'm dying. When it comes to critical things in life, I'm afraid we're prone to put it off. <laughs> I am. Every time I go to the doctor, guess what he says? You need to lose 50 pounds, that'll be $100, all right? <laughs> and I, obviously I say, oh yeah, I'll have to get to that. No use doing it now, I'm going to World Youth Day, and I want some kielbasa and pierogi, and I'll, 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 I'll put that off. Well, that's why this theme, now is the time of mercy, is so pungent is so punchy, is so critical for us to hear because it goes against that temptation to postpone. The gospel that Pope Francis has recommended that we reflect upon today is the temptations of Jesus in the desert. You remember those 40 days, remember? I just noticed uh, all the confectors over there. Isn't that great? Um, when I first came, I thought they were confessionals there, but those are the outdoor toilets. <laughs> those are, but the priests, I'm so glad they're there. Thank you. Thank you, brother priests. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> when our Lord was in the desert for those 40 days preparing for his public life, he had to make the decision. Was it going to be God or was it going to be Satan? Was it going to be God's way or the world's way? Was it going to be my will be done or thy will be done? Jesus, unlike ourselves, uh, did not procrastinate. He made the decision. Be gone, Satan. We don't live on bread alone. We don't live just on the things of this earth. We live for God. We live on God's word. Now, now is the time of mercy. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. So you get the point, my friends. We don't delay on God. We don't put the Lord off. We don't say, I'll think about that tomorrow. <clears throat> you know who said it well is uh, St. Augustine. And St. Augustine said, you get this, St. Augustine said, we'll always have God's mercy. We might not have tomorrow. <laughs> is that not chilling? Is that not haunting? We'll always have God's mercy. We might not have tomorrow. St. Augustine would agree. Now is the time of mercy. You know what, everybody? In the seven 
World Youth Days that I've had the joy of attending, I have discovered that they are times, can be times of decision, moments of choice, occasions of discernment. I have found, because people have told me, that World Youth Day can be an occasion when we stop postponing, quit delaying, and accept the invitation of God through his son Jesus to mercy. In Cologne, Germany, I still remember it to this day, and I still keep in touch. At the last day of catechesis, the animator said, okay, it was about 300, uh, 300 uh, young people in my catechism group uh, from English-speaking world, and the animator said, okay, we're supposed to now share, if you, if, if you want to tell people a way that the Holy Spirit has led you in these World Youth Days. So there was kind of a pause, and all of a sudden a fella at the back said, uh, I, I, I've, I've, the Holy Spirit has led me to a decision. And so they ran back with the microphone, and he took the microphone, and all 300 turned around. And he was a guy, he introduced himself, he said, Hi, I'm Bill Jones from Australia. I'm 27 years old, and the grace of the Holy Spirit has led me to make a decision. And with that, he falls to his knees and looks at the woman next to him and says, will you marry me? True. Now, everybody, of course, cheered. Everybody congratulated him. He, oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, that was a time of decision for him. I guess maybe he was delaying in a decision, postponing. Uh, a choice and the grace of God moved him to make a decision <clears throat> another time in Denver the priest uh, the priest who's with me on my uh, weekly uh, radio show on Catholic satellite radio father Dave Dwyer father Dave Dwyer tells me that as a young man at World Youth Day in Denver in 1993 he finally admitted that Jesus was calling him to serve him, Jesus, and his church as a priest. So it was at World Youth Day that Dave Dwyer heard and accepted the call to serve Jesus. So all I'm hinting at, my friends, is that the nowness, the urgency of God's message can be kind of a part of our World Youth Day. When it comes to listening to Jesus, to accepting his invitation to friendship and discipleship, to admitting that we are sinners and need God's mercy, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. So I ask you, what what is this decision? And I propose to you, everybody, that the basic decision comes down to this. That we simply decide, I want God. I want God. I need God. I need a Savior. And Jesus is the Savior. I am a sinner. I need his mercy. That's the decision that we're called to articulate now. Because today is the acceptable time. <clears throat> Let me conclude by recalling for you a precise time that that decision was made that had reverberations around the world and it was made in the field 
where we had mass last night. I don't know if you ever heard this term, nine days that changed the world. June 1st through June 9th, 1979. Most of you weren't born then. I was 29 years old. June 1st to June 9th, 1979. Nine days to change the world. What happened? Pope John Paul II returned here to Poland. He had been elected Pope. He was, as you know, Archbishop of Krakow. And he was elected Pope on October 16, 1978. And on June 1st, he returned home to Poland to begin nine days that changed the world. It was Mikhail Gorbachev who would say, it were those nine days that led to the call, fall of communism. What happened? Poland was depressed. For 20 years, Poland had been in slavery, first to the Nazis, and secondly to the communists. There was oppression. There were lies. There was no freedom of religion. For 20 years, human rights had been trampled. The sacredness of human life had been violated. People were disappearing. Religion was outlawed, and Poland was in the darkness of oppression. And John Paul II came, and for nine days he toured Poland. Two-thirds of the nation saw him in person. He not once used the word communism. He not once referred to the Soviet Union, whose troops a hundred thousand strong were ready with bayonets should there be an uprising. Not once did he talk about Karl Marx. Not once did he mention Lenin. Not once did he mention the Soviet puppets who were ruling Poland. He spoke about God. He spoke about faith. He spoke about human dignity. He spoke about truth. He spoke about the sacredness of human life. He spoke about Jesus and the church. And the millions and millions of Poles heard him. And a miracle happened. A miracle happened. Poland began to stand up. Poles began to raise their head after 20 years of slavery and a national consensus came that the people of Poland were chanted, we're not alone. They realized, we're tired of the lies. We're not animals. We're not robots. We're not cogs in a wheel. We're not part of some impersonal oppressive system. We're not numbers in an oppressive regime. We're not soulless bodies. We have a name. We have a history, we have a memory, a dream, we have a future, we have a culture, we have a calling, we have an eternal destiny, we have a faith, we have a soul, we have a savior, and, and, guess what happened here in Krakow? As two million people gathered for mass on his last day. And they thought, we'll never see him again. They're never going to let him back into the country. Two million people strong. And Pope John Paul II begins his sermon. And about 30 seconds into his prepared sermon, a chant of three words begins in the crowd. And that chant of three words is like the wave at a ballpark as it began to be chanted by more and more people 
until three million people were on their feet chanting these three words. What were the three words? Russia go home? No. No more communism? No. Viva el Papa? No. The three words were two million people, Poles yelling, we want God. We want God. We want God. It, it, it went on for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes. We want God. John Paul's master of ceremonies comes over and says, Holy Father, maybe you better tell the crowd to stop and to sit down. And John Paul looked at him and smiled and said, Are you kidding? This is what I came for. We want God. And a nation was born. A people was, were revitalized. A people came together in a word called solidarity. We are together with God. We are one in Christ. We are united in our faith and our human dignity. It was as if Poland was chanting with Jesus in the desert, Be gone, Satan. Enough of your empty promises, your lies, and your denial of God. We want God. We need God. We need His mercy. It was as if Poland was saying, Now is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of mercy. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever, Jesus, I trust in thee. Thank you.